Welcome to the CyberDad Podcast, where the tales of resilience, strategy, and vigilance gather to brighten the path toward digital security. Join me, the CyberDap, your host and guide through the maze of cyberspace. But before we delve into the depths of this virtual domain, allow me to share a bit of my own journey. I stand before you not just as a cybersecurity professional, but as a husband, a father of three, and a British Army veteran. Through my transformative experience in service, I bore witness to the ever-evolving landscape of warfare, where the front lines shifted from trenches to terminals and the weapons transformed from rifles to lines of coal. During my tenure, I embarked on two harrowing tours, each leaving its indelible mark on my soul. It was on my final mission that I found myself as part of a COVID team and trusted with a paramount duty, the safe redeployment of classified materials, safeguarding our nation's secrets from falling into the wrong hands. Yet, the scars of battle extend beyond the physical and it was through my own journey of recovery that I found solace and purpose in the realm of cybersecurity. Armed with a master's in computer forensics and cybersecurity, as well as certifications including Security Plus, CEH and ISACA certified in risk and information systems control, I stand as a guardian in the digital arena. Currently, I serve as a stalwart defender within one of the nation's largest law firms, where the stakes are high and the threats ever looming. But beyond my professional endeavors lies a deeper calling, commitment to empower business owners with the knowledge and tools necessary to fortify their digital fortresses against relentless attacks of cyber threats. The CyberDub podcast is not merely a collection of stories and advice. It is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. So whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or a novice business owner, join me on this journey as we navigate the turbulent waters of cyberspace, forging a path together, a safer, more secure tomorrow. Together, let's embark on a journey where knowledge is our armor and vigilance is our shield. Welcome to the CyberDAP podcast, where the battle for cybersecurity begins. I'm your host, the CyberDAP, and this is the CyberDAP podcast. Personal hygiene helps prevent diseases and makes it easy to bounce back easily when we feel down. In the same way, cyber hygiene is like personal hygiene because it helps safeguard and lays a foundation for cybersecurity and resilience. So what's cyber hygiene? What does it mean? How does it protect me and my business? Let's get a deep dive into this concept in today's episode of the CyberDAP podcast. Let's get started. Technology has changed the way we live. It's made it more convenient. We shop online, order food, bank, and run a business through various online applications and tools. While technology has cyberized life, it has also opened us up to many new things, making everything more convenient. It has also opened us up to many new threats that we didn't have to worry about. Cyber scams are nothing new. Every day, corn artists are looking for the best max and the idea that you or your business can't be a target is simply naive. There are hackers and scam artists worldwide lurking and waiting to gain access to bank accounts, personal information and business apparatus. Hackers don't need to know how much you have at the bank. Data is gold and everything from your identity, financial data, voting history and email is valuable. That is why it is so important to know how to protect your cyber life, making it safe and clean from cyber attacks. The backbone of any connected security system is the network, which is becoming more vulnerable. Cyber hygiene is a valuable facility that is critical to keeping things running and helping to protect the business against damaging attacks. Now, what is cyber hygiene? Cyber hygiene refers to the practices and procedures that individuals and businesses use to maintain the health and security resilience of their systems, devices, networks, and data. The main goal of cyber hygiene is to keep sensitive data secure and protected from cyber attacks and theft. The opposite of cyber hygiene can pose serious risks to all types of organizations because they can lead to the theft or encryption of sensitive According data. According to a report by IBM and the Pawn Mon Institute, the average data breach costs for businesses with fewer than 500 employees 
is $2.98 million. Now let's look at some core components of cyber hygiene. Regular maintenance. Just like personal hygiene, cyber hygiene is part of a routine to ensure the safety of identity and other details, as well as data that could be stolen or corrupted. These maintenance measures include keeping the software and operating system current, applying security patches, and regularly archiving Another component data. we can look at is security improvement. Now, by maintaining good cyber hygiene, businesses can minimize the incidence of operational interruptions, data breaches, and data loss. This means an overall improvement in the security apparatus of the business. Effectively using the fundamental cyber hygiene practices goes a long way in maintaining the optimal threat protection of the business. Training and awareness is another core component we, we're going to look at. Cyber hygiene requires people and businesses to adapt to or to adapt a security mindset and habits that helps reduce the incidence of security breaches. This includes providing cyber security awareness training to employees and growing culture. Another core component we can look at is the ongoing effort. Now, cyber hygiene isn't a one-time event, but it's a continuous process that requires routine and repetition. It involves regularly monitoring and assessing the effectiveness of security measures, as well as adapting to emerging threats. Collaboration. Now, cyber hygiene is a collective effort within the company or within a company and source professionals as well as IT users. IT security teams cannot always sustain good cyber hygiene on their own and they need the support and cooperation of all users within the organization. Let's look at the benefits of cyber hygiene. Increased security. Now, by implementing cyber hygiene practices, business can improve their overall security posture and reduce the risk of being hacked. These measures protect a business's data, client information, as well as devices from various Now, let's threats. talk about compliance. Cyber hygiene enables businesses to meet stringent regulatory requirements and avoid penalties associated with non-compliance. Now, cyber hygiene also ensures businesses follow the best practices to implement the necessary another measures. Point, another point we can look at is the fact that by engaging in cyber hygiene, you end up having an improved employee awareness. Now, by educating employees on the best practices and the culture change towards cybersecurity, cyber hygiene can be emphasized and practiced as employees play a crucial role in maintaining cyber hygiene. That's why their understanding is essential. Another benefit we can look at is reduce cost. Now, cyber hygiene helps businesses save money. This is by minimizing the need for costly security measures that come up in the event of a cyber threat that can disrupt business operations. Now, by proactively implementing cyber hygiene practices, businesses can reduce the need for these additional investments. Another benefit we can look at is better risk management. Now, cyber hygiene practices contribute to better risk management by minimizing vulnerabilities and preventing cyber threats. Now, by regularly updating software using strong passwords, conducting training and others, businesses can effectively manage their cybersecurity risks and protect their valuable assets. Reputation is everything. A stronger reputation. Who doesn't love the business that keeps everything safe and intact? Customers, partners and other stakeholders view a business more favorably when that business demonstrates adequate cyber hygiene. Now, this can lead to increased sales, growth opportunities, as well as customers are more likely to trust the brand. And when all the above that we've just mentioned or we've just talked about is achieved, greater productivity is gained. Now, cyber hygiene also protects or helps protect a business from cyber attacks by preventing bad actors from infiltrating the computer network and stealing data, thus saving time and resources to resolve security issues. Now, this in turn leads to improved productivity across the business. Now, let's look at some challenges of cyber hygiene. Look, cyber hygiene is an ideal we all want to achieve. But while maintaining cyber hygiene is good and critical, it also presents some challenges that include the complexity of an IT environment. Now, in today's world, the sheer volume of users, devices, 
and assets distributed widely makes maintaining proper cyber hygiene difficult. Let's look at monotony. Cyber hygiene isn't something security professionals and end users can ever complete. It requires a never ending stream of important and often neglected behaviors and tasks. Another challenge we can look at is user buy-in. Now, cybersecurity teams can't achieve good cyber hygiene on their own. They need the support and the engagement of end users throughout the business, from those with no interests or expertise to people with interests and expertise. This is why everyone needs a cultural mindset or a cultural mindset education on the prospects of cybersecurity and hygiene. Now let's look at cyber hygiene and AI. Cyber hygiene is going to be more of a need because of the evolution of AI and generative AI. The AI Security and Governance Report released by IMOTA found that 80% of data experts see AI as increasing data security challenges. In an in-depth look, 55% say the possibility of sensitive information being sent out by large language models is their greatest concern. There has also been an increase in AI-driven attacks thus far. But the good news is that AI may be helping to increase both the sense of urgency companies feel when it comes to preparing for cyber threats and the tools that they have to do so. The tales of the coin see AI becoming a tool for cyber criminals, which is already presenting itself, with 93% predicting that AI cyber attacks will become a daily reoccurrence by 2025. This is why stakeholders and business owners need to make sure that the what's and the why's of, pol of policies the business may have in terms of cybersecurity are as up to date as possible. Now let's look at common sense ways to protect yourself online. Now you can also call these cyber, cyber hygiene practices. Now turning on multi-factor authentication. I was reading an article the other day and it's, it's, it's become apparent that people still don't have multi-factor authentication turned on, be it on their emails, be it on various applications i'm not sure why or their end goal what their end goal is but it will be good to turn on your multi-factor authentication now multi-factor authentication goes a long way to secure your data it also goes by two-factor authentication or two-step authentication now this means opting into another step when trusted websites and applications ask you to confirm you are really who you are or who you, you are really who you say you are. Now, this is evident in banks, social media networks, schools, workplaces, and businesses because they want to make sure you are the one accessing your information. In essence, multi-factor authentication is taking a step to double check. The second step is to be a lot harder. Another so it's harder we can to look at is updating your software or keeping, keeping software updates automatic. Now, bad actors always exploit the flaws in a system. This is why software engineers work as hard as they can to rectify, but their work relies on us, the users, updating the software with their latest fixes. Now, update or updating the operating system on your mobile phones, tablets, laptops, and workstations. Also, your applications, including the web browsers on all your devices. Now, this where endpoint security or an endpoint security solution is a tangible solution worth considering as this automatically detects and deploys security patches. Now let's look at another practice. Think before you click. I'm sure we've seen a link that looks a little off. Asking if you need to change your password, enter a password, verify personal information, and so on. It could also come in the form of a text message or even a phone call, pretending to be an email service, boss, bank or something else. Most times it says they need your information to proceed because you've been affected in some way with an urgent connotation of course. This can be a phishing scheme or malware trick designed by hackers to reveal your passwords, credit card numbers or any sensitive information. Once they have it, the Lord knows what they do to and with it. The moral lesson is this. If it's a link you don't recognize, trust your instincts and think before you click. Let's look at another practice. The use of strong passwords. Now, picking an easy password is like 
locking your door, but hanging the key on the doorknob. Anyone can get in. So what can you do to create stronger passwords? It should be at least 16 characters long, be unique and not reuse old passwords from different apps. Now, these passwords can be generated randomly using the human imagination. You mustn't now you mustn't recycle the same password across all apps and websites. If you're going to have trouble remembering, you can use a password manager to store all your passwords that way. You don't have to cram all the passwords. You can take it up a notch by securing the password manager using multi-factor authentication. Another practice we can look at is backup. Now, regular backup of important data and storing it in secure location in the event of a data loss is key. Now, this entails keeping at least three copies of data on two different media. One stored online or one stored offline and one stored offsite. Let's look at antivirus and anti-malware. Now these applications or these are applications that can help detect and remove malicious programs. Now by regularly using them on all devices, possible malware can be removed and virus lurking can be detected. So the proper handling of the virus is done to protect the integrity of the data and the business apparel. Earlier I want to talk briefly about encryption. Again, your data must be encrypted. Encryption is a powerful mechanism that ensures that if, even if intercepted or accessed or assessed unlawfully, the information remains secure and unintelligible. Now, encryption also ensures that your data is protected, both in transit or traffic and at rest, by encoding it in a way that can only be accessed by the correct encryption key. Now, allowing listing or blocking listing, this entails the control of which applications, websites, email addresses, and users can and can't use. Now, by allowing or rather providing a specific list of apps, processes, and files, allowing listing helps manage the traffic of people having access to files, while block listing provides a list of apps and websites users can't use except granted access. Now, let's look at a seven-step cyber hygiene checklist for your business. Now, one will be performing regular app software updates, conducting employee training to reduce the vulnerability of human error, mandatory multi-factor authentication, employing phishing protection, as well as implementing network segmentation by use of a trust model. You can also schedule regular backups and also invest in regular security audits. Now let's look at Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA. This is a highlight of this US governmental agency that can help businesses with their cybersecurity or cyber hygiene services. Now CISA offers scanning and testing services to help businesses and organizations reduce their exposure to threats by taking a proactive approach and mitigating attack vec vectors. Now, their services include vulnerability scanning, where an evaluation of external network presence is done by executing continuous scans of public stats for accessible services and vulnerabilities. Now, it also provides weekly vulnerability reports and alerts. Let's also look at web application scanning. Now, this evaluates publicly accessible web applications to uncover weak spots that attackers can exploit. It provides this report monthly to ensure your web applications remain secure. This is just an example of the service you want to look out for when searching for an external cybersecurity team to help practice and maintain cyber hygiene. The value of cyber hygiene in today's world is unparalleled. This is because it acts as a frontline defense against multiple cyber threats. By implementing cybersecurity and hygiene practices, we stand to safeguard business data and buttress an approach to cyber resi resilience. So let's try to practice these tips. Let's try to do a full sweep and be security conscious. Thank you for joining us on the CyberDAP podcast, where we delve deep into the crucial world of cybersecurity and arm your business with the knowledge to protect itself. We hope today's episode has shed light on the importance of proactive cybersecurity measures and provided you with actionable insights.
Cybersecurity is not just a one-time effort. It's an ongoing commitment to safeguarding your business's future. And that's where we come in. At the CyberDAP podcast, we offer tailored cybersecurity consultancy services designed to meet the unique challenges faced by small and medium-sized businesses. Our expertise spans from threat protection, vulnerability management, cybersecurity asset management, detection and response, patch management, and continuous monitoring. Imagine having a dedicated team of cybersecurity experts by your side, helping you navigate the ever-evolving landscape of cyber threats. We assess your current security posture, identify vulnerabilities, and implement robust strategies to ensure your business is fortified against any attack. Are you ready to take cybersecurity to the next level? Don't leave your business exposed to unnecessary risk. Reach out to us today at www.thecyberdab.com to schedule a consultation. Let's work together to create a resilient and secure environment for your business. If you found today's episode valuable, please subscribe, leave us a review, and share this podcast with your network. Your support helps us continue to bring expert insights to businesses striving to enhance their cybersecurity. Stay vigilant, stay secure, and until next time, keep your defenses strong.